Hi everyone, I'm Rick Zanotti, and this is Tech Down Over. In this show, we're going to talk about how to set your colors correctly on the C200 and other cinema cameras from Canon so that you don't get that magenta cast, that reddish, I've just got a sunburn kind of look. Harold Muliati is going to be helping me with this, and here we go. This show is sponsored by Relate Corporation at www.relate.com. Your training and video partner. If you're like us and you just got a cinema camera, we bought this one, the C200, about two months ago, almost three months. And what we noticed as we started filming is that we were getting a very magenta cast, especially on people's skins. Now, if you notice right now, I'm probably a little bit on the reddish side because we put everything back to default settings. As soon as you start making little tweaks, it goes red and it, you look like you've got a bad burn. And that's not a great look. If you look at YouTube, there's a lot of people with lighting and everything and they look very red. Now, we don't know what cameras they're on, but it's a problem that happens, one, with LED lights sometimes, and two, just the nature of people's skin. It's thinner on the face. So if you have high lighting, there's a good chance you're going to get some of that tone. Um, and the Canon C200, among others, has a bit of a magenta cast, meaning it gives a little bit too much red or reddish tinge to what we're doing. So we did some research and Harold put together uh, a good set of settings that you can use without having to go to log per se to make it better. We tried log, it didn't really fix a lot until we fixed what was coming into the camera. Anytime you're trying to do filming, if you can fix it before you have to go to post, fix it there. And color and, and lighting are two things you can fix in post, but not as easily. So in this case, Harold's going to show how to set the settings so that I wind up looking more like a real person rather than somebody who's been sunburned. And for reference, Rick's wearing an orange shirt right now in actuality, not Simon Pink as it looks on the mm. screen there. So Very true. I I'm going to go over the camera and I'll c bring up the menu and explain what I'm doing. So the first thing that we are going to do is we'll go into the menu here and we are going to go over to custom picture menu, the second one here. And by default, it won't be activated. You'll have to go here and activate other settings. And then this other settings menu will be accessible. The first, other, the first setting we're going to is black, the very first one here. And we're going to, and this is to get more contrast, part of which will make us um, be able to see the colors a bit better. We're going to lower the master pedestal here. We do about minus 30. That, that goes, gives you a good bit of contrast without crushing all of the dark areas too much. The next thing is we're going to add some saturation. This is the low key saturation. And we are first going to have to activate it. So put it to on. And we just added a little bit. We added plus 18. And uh, if you're not as familiar with the cinema cameras, they tend to use bigger scales than for these sorts of settings than, say, the camcorders. Rather than you know one to five, it'll be like one to one hundred or something like that. So now we've got more saturation. And actually, let me just exit the menu first, and you'll be able to see how much of a sort of reddish magenta cast that Rick has on him, him right now. And now we are going to go and fix our colors. Back to other settings, we're going to this color matrix tuning here. And what this does is it's a little similar. If you're familiar with Photoshop's channel mixer, it kind of takes input from the sensor on one color channel and shifts it towards another color. So first what we have to do is we're going to raise the gain just a little bit here, or otherwise it doesn't really do anything. So we just have it to plus three. Most important one here, red to green. We're going to lower this. And we're going to put it to minus 28. And we're going to go over to green to red. And we're going to go plus 4. 
and we're going to go to blue to red, and we're going to do plus 10 on that. And now, if I exit here, you should be able to see that Rick has less of a sort of pinky, unnaturally pink tone to his skin as he did before. Now he has a bit more tan in there, and as you can see, his shirt is actually looking orange, which is what it actually is in real life. Now, mind you, some of these values may change a little in your particular situation. We did quite a bit of testing, and Harold spent a lot of time going through settings until so we found something that worked really well. Now, mind you, it wasn't incredibly difficult. It just took a little bit of testing because situations are different. Your lighting may be different. Your ambient uh, location may be different. What you're looking for may be different. You may want a magenta cast. You may want a different kind of cast. But we were looking for a more realistic skin tone. And, and this did it for us uh, with different people. Not to mention, like Harold said, the colors of the shirt and everything all of a sudden I look like the real colors. I'm looking at my shirt, I'm looking at that, it looks pretty real. So they'll probably be pretty good for you. It's a good starting point. I would say start here and then tweak a little bit if you need to. And like we said earlier, even though some, some people will tend to say, you know, just do the colors, corrections, stuff like that in post, we like to get things close to where it's supposed to be in the first place. That way, if we need to make corrections, it's just minor. And it, I, it just makes things easier. It, it, it streamlines things a bit. And it's a little harder in post sometimes, and not all that easy to do because post affects things a little bit differently. You can, but again, you're not always going to get the result you want when you get it. So it's a little safer to do it in camera before you go. Now, a lot of people are going to say, no, 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 do everything raw. Yeah, but you, know, you have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on getting CF Express cards. You don't need to um, because they don't hold that much. And you're going to spend a thousand bucks for, I think, like a, I forgot what it was, less than a one terabyte drive. It, you don't get much. I think one hour of, of video on this is one terabyte. It's a lot of video. That means you better have a really fast machine to process it. If you do, great. If you don't, Stick to the MP4s and you'll get very good output anyway. Uh, again, we're not going out to a movie theater. This is mostly going to YouTube and to uh, client sites where they're putting it into their own servers or anything else. It's, for the most part, not cinema or broadcast. Uh, anyway, hope you learned something on this. If you have any questions, please put them down below in the notes area. Harold is also putting the settings that we use so you can actually just Take a read at them real quickly and then apply them to your C100, 200, 300, 400, whatever, 500, and you should be okay. Have a good one, everyone. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.